predictive analytics. If you think it sounds complicated, that's mainly because it is. In most cases, building predictive models involves some fairly complex calculations and requires special tools. So you might also think that those tools tend to be the realm of the data scientist, putting predictive analytics out of the reach of the average business due to a lack of said data scientist or because it was beyond their budget. Well, that might have been the case a few years ago, but not so much anymore. With the advent of artificial intelligence and machine learning becoming available to all, there are now some much more accessible solutions. One of those being PCAN. In this video, we'll take a look at what PCAN offers in terms of predictive analytics using generative artificial intelligence, or Gen AI. Let's jump in. Hello and welcome to Learn BI Online with me, Adam Finer, helping you do more with data. Predictive analytics isn't something I've really covered on this channel, so when PCAN approached me asking if I'd like to check out their tool, I took it for a spin and decided it was something that you guys might be interested in too. Full disclosure, PCAN are very kindly sponsoring today's video. I'm going to be demoing their platform for you, but they haven't told me what to say, so it's completely my review. If you want to check them out for yourself, there's a link in the description below. If at this point you're asking yourself, what is predictive analytics? It's essentially using data, statistical algorithms, and machine learning to predict future behavior, trends, and outcomes. So this being a business intelligence channel, what are the kinds of predictions that businesses want to make? Well, there are a few very common use cases, things like revenue prediction or churn, which is predicting how many existing customers might stop using a product or service in the future. Churn rate is the use case we're going to look at now using PCAN. So let's jump onto my computer. Here on PCAN's website, it says reimagine machine learning with PCAN's predictive Gen AI or generative artificial intelligence. Level up your skills and impact with machine learning. Start your AI journey today. It also says zero data engineering, no data scientists needed, and coding optional, which sounds great. You can sign up here for a 14-day free trial, and when you do and you log in, you'll be greeted by PCAN's AI assistant, who says, I'll assist you in formulating a predictive question. I'll then create a SQL notebook to build a training set. So what would you like to predict? Well, in our case, I want to predict customer churn, so I'll send that. And the reply comes back, great, I'd be happy to help you solve your customer churn predictive use case. For example, a predictive question could be, predict weekly which customers will stop making purchases in the next seven days. This is just an example and we can refine it to better suit your needs. In order for me to help you phrase your own predictive question, all you need to do is to answer four simple questions. Ready to get started? Let's start with the first question. Who or what is the subject of your prediction? In this case, is it safe to assume that the subject is your customers? Well, that is correct, so I'll send yes. Great, so we're predicting something about your customers. Now let's move on to the second question. What is the specific activity or event that you are trying to predict about your customers? In the context of customer churn, this could be something like customers will stop making purchases or customers will cancel their subscription. Could you please specify the activity you're interested in predicting? Well, it's stop making purchases. That's what we're interested in. So we'll send that, perfect. So we're predicting whether your customers will stop making purchases. Now on to the third question. How far into the future do you want to predict this activity? For example, do you want to predict if a customer will stop making purchases in the next seven days, 14 days, or perhaps a month? Please specify the time frame. Well, for us, we want a month. Great, so we're predicting whether a customer will stop making purchases in the next month. Now for the final question. Do you want to predict this on a recurring basis, like daily, weekly, monthly, or is there a specific event after which you want to predict? For example, do you want to predict this every week for all customers or only for customers after they make a purchase or after they sign up? Well, I actually want to predict this on a monthly basis, so I'll send monthly. 
Excellent. So you want to make this prediction on a monthly basis. Here is your predictive question. Predict monthly which customers will stop making purchases in the next month. Exciting, you made it. You can use this question as is, or we can refine it further. Would you like to add more details to this question? No, for me, that looks good. So I'm going to hit looks good. Fantastic. In order to create a predictive SQL notebook that fits your data requirements, we need to review your data. Sounds good? Please note that PCAN strictly adheres to data security compliance standards, being ISO 27001 and SOC 2 certified. Sure, let's continue with my data. Let's talk data. To predict customer churn, we need to have historical data about your customer's purchase behavior. Do you have a table that contains records of your customer's purchases? This table should include a unique identifier for each customer, like a customer ID, and the date of each purchase. If you have such a table, could you please upload it as a CSV file using the attachment button next to the chat input line? So that's this one here. I'll hit that. I've got this transactions file here. So we'll upload that. And we'll send it. So PCAN analyzes the file and uh, finds all the different columns that are in the source file and also attributes a data type to each. So um, we need to say this looks good. Great, now let's identify the necessary columns in your table. We need to find one, the column that holds the date of each purchase. This is mandatory as PCAN cannot build a model without this column. And number two, the column that holds the unique identifier for each customer. This is also mandatory. Could you please tell me the names of these columns in your table? So we have the date column here. And right at the top, we have the customer ID column. So I'm just going to say date and customer underscore ID. Perfect. So we have the date of each purchase in the date column, the un unique identifier for each customer in the customer ID column. Just to confirm, are these the correct columns that we should use for the prediction? Yes. Wonderful. Here's a summary of the information you provided. Okay, so we've got the predictive question that we formulated a minute ago, uh, and information about the data schema, the table and the columns that we need. So if that all looks good, we're gonna hit generate notebook, and it'll start the process of generating the predictive notebook. Now this might take a minute or two, so let's jump forward to once it's done. And here we are in the generated notebook, or nutbook, as we're working with PCAN, of course. So using this PCAN notebook, you'll be able to train an ML or machine learning model that answers your predictive question, the one that we formulated a minute ago. So the cells below contain queries, SQL queries, that were automatically generated based on your predictive question. Running them will create a training set. Uh, using PCAN's format comprised of two parts. So the two parts, there's a core set, which is a table with historical examples of customers who did or did not stop making purchases, and attribute tables. So additional tables with relevant information about the customers. So if we go down here, we see finding relevant customers for our core set. We're trying to learn how to make a monthly prediction on customers. As a basis to learn from, our training set first needs to have a table with a row for each pair of customer and each month. So this first query here says this will return all days, weeks or months in the given time frame. And you can run these different queries independently. Let me just run this one here. And the result or at least a preview of the result will appear below here. And this, uh, the name being given to this cell is monthly sampling helper table. Okay, if we keep going down, next we'll write a query that will find relevant customer per sampled data. So that's this query here. Now, obviously you don't need to know SQL, you can just run these queries, but obviously it does help um, to understand SQL a little bit to know what's going on with these queries. Let's just run this. There we go, success. 
Uh, the label, our positive and negative examples. In order to train a model, we need to give it both positive and negative examples. In our context, the positive examples are customers who stop making purchases in the next month after each sample month. Um, so this query below will now find positive and negative examples from historical data. Let's run this. And there we go. Did the customer stop making purchases within next month? And for each customer ID, we've got yes and no. If we keep going down, additional useful data to help train the model. As mentioned, it's important to include additional tables with information about our prediction subjects. At PCAN, we call these attribute tables. We used your data to create a sample attribute table. So that's this one here, attribute one, using the file that we uploaded for additional data features. And we can see here it's taken some of the other fields from that file. Let's run this query. And there we go, it's successfully run that query too. If you want, you can just click this button here to run them all, but if you want to sort of understand step by step what's going on and the results that are being returned, then you can just do one by one. So, and that's it. Um, we're now ready for PCAN to train the model. Let's review what we did. So we created a table, the core set, that samples the history of customers, determining whether they stop making purchases or not per each sample date which serves as uh, positive and negative examples the model can learn from. And then secondly, we added additional tables, the attribute tables, that provide more information for each of the customers up to each sample date. This extra data enhances the model's ability to infer patterns and make accurate predictions. Makes sense. Exciting, the final step would be to click train model at the top. That's this uh, purple button here, let's hit that. And we have two options in terms of training mode. We have fastest and production quality. Obviously, production quality takes several hours. So for our purposes, we're going to stick to fastest uh, data mapping and we're just going to validate and train. Obviously, this is going to take a while. So let's jump forward. Once that's run, we end up in the model tab, where first off, we can see the model's evaluation. In terms of its performance, we can see it has a precision of 66.4%, which is 2.6 times better than rule-based logic and 3.9 times better than a random guess. We can see other things like the performance details, threshold configuration, and also the top contributing columns to the model predictions. We can see here that payment recency is contributing 69.9% of the model's prediction. So we can see here this column significantly dominates your model's prediction, suggesting possible overdependence and potential issues. We'll sort that out in a minute. So in the model output tab, we can see a sample of the rows. So in terms of the customer and the probability, the classification and the veracity of the result. So let's go back to queries. We can see here that notebooks are locked once a model is sent to training. So if we did want to edit this model in any way, perhaps by adding more data, we would need to duplicate it, which I can do here. Or I'll just go back to this screen here where we can see the notebook we've previously created. I'm going to click here and select duplicate and open up this new copy. So in terms of importing or adding new data, we have this part section here where we can choose to add new data. There's this customer's file. In fact, I've already included that here. So I can generate this as an attribute. This will create a new cell. So we can see here that this new customer's information could help better train the model. So when we run all, this new data will be included. So that's adding CSV data. But what about other data sources? Well, if I come down to here, I can choose to add data and create a new connection. And we can see a menu of all of the different data sources that we have at our disposal. So we have relational databases like SQL Server and MySQL. We have data warehouses like Google BigQuery and Amazon Redshift and other data sources like Salesforce and HubSpot. Also, we can see coming soon Google Ads and Greenplum. 
If you don't see your data source on this list, you can click here and suggest a new one for development. So we've seen how to predict customer churn, but what other solutions are available from Pecan straight out of the box? Well, in terms of user acquisition, we've got things like marketing mix modeling, predictive campaign ROAS or return on ad spend, campaign optimization using scan and lead scoring with predictive analytics. For customer engagement, as well as customer churn, we've got customer win back and upsell and cross sell. And in terms of supply chain, we've got demand forecasting. Now, if you're worried about not having any data to practice this with, not to worry, Pecan has you covered. If we go to their main page here, we actually have two tutorial notebooks that you can play around with. So don't hesitate to do that. So a massive thank you to Pecan for sponsoring today's video. It really does help out the channel and keeps the content coming. If you want to check them out, which I highly recommend you do, I'll leave a link in the description or just head on over to pecan.ai. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon for another video. Until then, bye.